Hi, I'm meteorologist Chris Tomer. Let's have a little bit of fun here today. I'm going to start doing these videos a little bit more often, but they're going to be geared more towards storm forecast, snow forecast, mountain forecasting. And I was doing this the last couple of winters, and so we're kind of rolling into that now, but I did want to bring some other topics to the forefront. Today, we'll get into cloud seeding, which is actually a bigger topic than I think most people realize here in Colorado. It, I feel like it's kind of swept under the rug a little bit. So we'll kind of get into what it is and if it's, if it's beneficial, uh, according to the latest studies. I try to keep things very evidence-based here. Um, so we'll look at that in a second. But um, one of the things I'm going to do each week if we've got a storm or if there's mountain weather coming in, in particular Colorado, is I'll get, give you some headlines. We'll go into snow and all that kind of stuff. But for, for now, uh, to kind of lead off this talk, uh, we do have an end-of-the-week storm system. It's actually what could be a merger of two different elements. Yesterday, it looked like there might just be one, a cold front, but we might actually get two with a southern low coming in first then a cold front dropping into Colorado right after that. Uh, and I'm looking at uh, late Thursday, Friday, and then probably even into Saturday as well before um, the whole thing kind of winds down. That would leave us with a powder day on Saturday. And to add to that, we may have another sort of disturbance coming in on a northwest flow for Tuesday of next week. So those are some of the headlines right now. What I want to do is uh, kind of bring you up to speed on where we are as far as snow totals at resorts. Obviously, there are always backcountry sites that get a lot more than this, but when you look at resorts, Jackson Hole is at the top, and this kind of feeds into my overall winter forecast of sort of the northern tier of the Rockies getting more snow this winter anyway. Wolf Creek, though, a real surprise. They're not far behind. Most likely the first resort in Colorado to break the 100-inch mark. Wolf Creek is right there, and sometimes this happens early season. Uh, Wolf Creek can gather a lot of snow, even in a La Nina pattern, and then it really tends to wane after that and shift to the central and northern mountains. Whistler Blackcomb is another great place for the entire season. I think if you're looking for consistency, Jackson Hole, Whistler Blackcomb, Alta, Snowbird, and Snow Basin, Steamboat are all great bets for the Christmas, uh, New Year's time frame in a year like this. Winter Park really doing well. Alta is up there. They're going to add a lot more by the end of the week into next week. Breck is there. Keystone Vale, Loveland, Heavenly. You can see the list. Not a lot in Northern California just yet. All right, so that's kind of where we stand as far as uh, snowfall. What we need, though, is to add more to this. And there is a, uh, there's an approach that is based in science here in Colorado that Vale Resorts in particular has been using for a while. It's called cloud seeding. This is an actual cloud seeding generator. And what it's doing is it's uh, launching or shooting silver iodide particles into the atmosphere, up into the air. Now, the latest study indicates that this has to be done with great care. And I'll give you the link to the study. You can go and read it for yourself. And I prefer people do that um, as well, just so you can kind of get the full context and the background of all this. But the bottom line is this works, it's effective according to the latest study, and, but it has to be done under the right circumstances. You have to have the right setup. You can't just throw iodine into the air and expect to get snow. It has to be done under the right circumstances. Meteorologically speaking, in Colorado, that typically has to be a west-northwest type of flow pattern where you're bringing in colder air. Um, on mountaintops and above in the clouds. So here's how this works. Typically a three-step process. You have the seeding generator throwing the particles up into the air, into the prevailing wind, takes them into the cloud. This can also be injected via aircraft, which we have seen before done. But the most important process is what happens up in the cloud. So the silver iodine provides new in a multitude of tiny surfaces, or as we call them, cloud condensation nuclei. And that gives these little tiny surfaces uh, the ability for condensation to condense upon. And then what you have is you have a process um, started. And you, that process continues to build and build and build. And you eventually get crystallization. You get snowfall coming out of the cloud. And the belief is that from the study, you're enhancing snowfall that would have already been there. So the latest study finds a 5 to 15% bump or increase in snow accumulation per storm. That's per storm, 5 to 15% bump with the right setup. Now that is pretty significant. 
So let's look at a hypothetical result out of this for Vale, since Vale's the one that's doing it. And by the way, the headline is that Vale is not doing it this winter. They're canceling it this winter because of the pandemic. They're cost cutting, and it's actually a pretty big expenditure. So that's the whole reason this rose to the surface. And I look back, looked over the study. So there's the link to the study out of uh, in, uh, UCAR, NCAR. If you want to take a look at that, uh, there's the link to that. I always like to provide links. Um, I don't want anything to be, you know, in a vacuum here. Or to, you know, if you want to go look at it, look at it. So we have a 12-inch snowstorm in Vail, hypothetically. You add the bump from the seating, and you can potentially add another inch to up to 1.8 inches for a storm like that coming in. Uh, you would even see that effect downwind, whatever the downwind is from that storm. Uh, from a northwest flow pattern, it would be towards copper, um, and then towards the 10 mile range. And if the flow is right, you'd get it over Breck. Um, maybe, maybe even as far as uh, A Base and Loveland. Uh, I'd have to take a closer look at that. But that's hypothetically what we're looking at um, from a setup like this. So, um, oh, I want to show you the zone that we're talking about geographically so you can understand that this is the area that they're seeding right now. So again, it's, it's sort of that whole Vail district. Um, downwind of the, and again, the, the prime setup would be a no, cold northwest flow. And you can see the area that they're seeding right there um, in the blue. So here's where we're going to end. And I, I found this to be uh, very interesting. This is a mobile Doppler. And this was part of the study in 2017, which took place in Idaho. So radar gets blocked by the mountains. Uh, they're tuned to big cities. Um, for obvious reasons, and so anything in the mountains tends to get blocked and you don't really see what's coming. So they had to use a mobile Doppler for the snowy study back in 2017 in Idaho, and that was the picture of the, they set it up in between bridges, and that's how they were able to throw the iodine up, iodide particles, and then study the effects under a perfect setup. So very interesting stuff here. Uh, again, um, I'm going to keep doing these videos. Um, they're going to be starting to shift more towards weekly forecasts and mountain forecasts, but uh, oh, as always, I appreciate you tuning in here. Thank you.